Welcome to the Kodu Game Lab tutorial. My name is Pat, and I'll be your guide. Kodu is whatever you want it to be. It just all depends on the person. You start with what you want the game to be about. You can create the full game itself. You're gonna see the art behind video games. Kids are learning how to program and make video games. Actually making something instead of just playing it. I'm loving it. We're going to use Kodu to introduce or review object-oriented programming, input and output, all within a game context. Go ahead and select Load World, and we'll go and find our first tutorial called First Tutorial. All these tutorials are found under the Lessons tab, located up here. And in our first tutorial, we're going to learn how to add a Kodu to our world and program him to respond to user input, which could be a gamepad, or in this case, a keyboard. Go ahead and click Play. Welcome to the first Kodu Game Lab tutorial. During the tutorial, you will see a bar at the top of the screen with instructions for you to follow. These instructions are going to guide you through the actions needed to complete the tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to add a Kodu to our world and program the Kodu to respond to user input. Let's first add a Kodu. Press Escape, go to the Kodu tool, and click anywhere to add a new object. Here I'm going to add a Kodu. So Well, let's see what happens. Let's play the world. And nothing is happening. Well, let's go back to edit mode to give Kodu some programming. Press escape. And we're going to click on the object tool. And we're going to right click on the Kodu and select program. Here we're going to click on that plus sign behind the win and select keyboard. And on the keyboard specifically we want the arrow keys. So let's pick those. And what do we want to do because of the arrow keys? We want to move the Kodu. So let's move the Kodu. Great. So let's see what happens according to the code we just programmed. Well, looks like you can move the Kodu now using the arrow keys on my keyboard. Isn't that cool? In fact, I could use a gamepad as well. So, we can use the same techniques to add and program other characters now, not just a Kodu. Exit the tutorial by pressing X or clicking on Exit Tutorial. And let's go to the Home screen. Here we're going to load a different world and discard our changes. Let's find another tutorial. We're going to program the Kodu to find apples. This is going to teach us to how to add apples and a Kodu to the world, and then program the Kodu to find and eat the apples. Here the Kodu is going to move by itself. Let's go ahead and click play. We're going to add the apples and the Kodu to our world, and we're going to program the Kodu to find and eat the apples. And remember, this is not through user input, but autonomously. So let's add some apples. Press Escape, click the Object tool, go to Apple, and we're going to select an area on the screen. We're going to do that a couple more times. Now we need to add a Kodu in the same way. So click the Object tool, click Kodu. Let's program the Kodu to find and eat the apples. In this case, the Kodu is going to move by itself, find the apples, and eat the apples all on its own. 
right click on the character and select program. Click on program and we see the when do statements again. Go ahead and click on the plus sign and select the C tile. In the next space, let's add an apple. Go to objects, click on it, and find the apple. Click on it. Now we have when C apple, and we're going to do something. Let's do the move. So select the move tile. And when you're done, we should have C apple do move. In the next space, we have to add toward. So find toward. There we go. Let's do the rest. On the second line, we're going to add bump. So find bump. And we're going to bump an apple. So select apple under objects again. And when we bump the apple, we want to eat it. So select eat. This is going to make the apple disappear when we touch it. All right, we programmed the Kodu. It's time to run the game. Press Escape, and let's go to the Play button. And here we see our Kodu moving by itself and eating the apples all on its own. So we programmed the Kodu to find and eat apples. We can use the same techniques in future games as well. Let's go to the next tutorial. Go ahead and load another world, discard our changes, and we're going to go to the score tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to keep score. Click play, and let's see what we can learn. This tutorial will teach us how to use scores in our game. The world, the world we're starting with has a cycle, a tree, and several apples. The cycle is programmed to find all the apples and eat them. The cycle's programming looks a lot like this. When C, Apple, do, move, toward. And then the last line is always, move, wander. We're going to add a line that makes the cycle use a score to keep track of how many apples are eaten. Go ahead and press continue. Right now, when we bump an apple, we eat it. What we want is to also add a point to the score each time. When bump apple do score red. Let's continue. This is what the cycle does right now. It finds the apples and eats them. Wonderful. But we'd like to help the cycle keep score. Click the object tool, right click on the character, select program, and we already have some lines of code in here. We're going to create a fourth line of code. And here we're going to bump. Select bump. And we're going to bump an apple. So select apple. And what do we want to do? We want to score. So select game. Find score. And in addition, we want to be specific. We want a red score. Select scores, select red. Let's play the game and see what happens. Press escape. Let's go to the play arrow. And here we see one point being scored each time. And in the top right part of the screen, you see the score incrementing. Okay, so the cycle ate all the apples. Now, what would be really nice is if we programmed a tree to end the game when five apples are eaten. Let's go ahead and do that. Click Continue. And press Escape to go to Edit Mode. Select the Object tool. Let's go to the tree and select program. Right click on the tree 
and select program. Well, what we want is when scored points red is five, we want to end the game. Click scored, go to points, go to five, and then to be specific, we want the red points. So let's go to scores and click red. And what do we want to do? We want to end the game. Let's go to game and select end. So when the red score hits five, the game will end. Well, let's see what happens. Click play. And what we see here is that the cycle automatically finds the apples, eats them, scores a point, and when we get to five, the game ends. Good job. All right. So you know how to keep score and count apples and even end a game when you hit a certain score. How can we use these ideas in a future game? Click continue. And let's go ahead and load up the next tutorial. Let's go to the home screen. And let's go to load world and discard the changes we made to the score tutorial. All right, well, let's create our own game. We need to find a world to start with. So we could start with one of the tutorials we used or this particular tutorial the Add Paint Terrain tutorial. Here we'll, we'll create our own land and then make a game out of it. Or let's look through some samples and see what we can use to spark our creativity. Under the Lessons tab or the All tab, you can find other worlds. I actually like this particular world, the Empty Stadium. It's a big empty stadium. Let's sit take a look at it and see what it has to offer press play and here we go a big empty stadium we get some cheering in the background when the game starts this cheering is controlled by the tree in the background let's take a look at the code click the object tool find the tree go to program and here we see play arena so that's the arena sound that we heard before. We can add code here, or we can create some objects, program them to accept user input, and then display the score as output. 